Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. Um, for this one we are going to stick to Melbourne and we're going to go to the suburb of Richmond this time. And this is a beer, or a brewery rather, that has been quite highly recommended to me from my Australian subscribers. So a big thank you to those of you who've recommended this one for me. And a thank you as well to John Shepherd. He's contributed majorly to one of my future videos, so I'll just take the opportunity to thank him now. Um, but for this one, we are going to go and have a taste of a beer from Mountain Goat Brewery, or Mountain Goat Beer as it seems to be called. And this one is the Organic Steam Ale. And I picked this one because, obviously, if you think of a steam ale, you think of Anchor Brewery in America. And that's a beer that I really, really enjoy. So hopefully this one is quite an interesting variant of that. So, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll take you through a brief history of the brewery. It is quite short for this one, but if you don't want to stick with me for it, just fast forward a few minutes into the video and you will get right to the tasting. The brewery website's in the video description for you below, along with a link to my other reviews that I will hopefully add in the future from Mountain Goat. So anyway, this brewery was formed by two friends, Dave and Cam, in the early 1990s. Now Dave was an avid weekend home brewer and Cam was actually an avid backpacker as well. But Cam was taken by a friend to one of the various microbreweries in the Vancouver area over in British Columbia in Canada. And he says this was where his vision of beer changed, just kind of like that. And he said that he could just imagine there and then exactly what Dave was trying to do in his back garden and by brewing all of this beer. But he sent Dave a postcard saying that they had to start a microbrewery in Melbourne and, you know, this was the kind of catalyst for it kicking off. But um, after working hard for two years to replicate and improve the recipes that they had, the first Mountain Bo Commercial Mountain Go Ale was born in October of 1997, and this was the High Tail Ale. Now, they contract brewed their initial batches in different breweries around Melbourne in the early days because they didn't have the cash to start up their own brewery. And Dave actually spent a period living in a disused town hall in country Victoria, while Cam actually wrote up a business plan and tried to attract investors to invest in their project. But he had bit... They actually had very, very little success doing this, but they remained persistent and they eventually secured the funds to get a small brewery up and running from friends, family and a business banker who reported they got very, very sick of them pestering them. But they opened up their brewery in a warehouse in the Richmond suburb of Melbourne. But 17 years on, the brewery is still owned by Dave and Cam and it remains independent. But they now have around 25 full-time staff and 20 casuals and they continue to brew their small batch beers in Richmond, but they brew their higher kind of their higher demand beers which I guess is kind of this one here they brew these at a bigger facility in Laverton but they offer free tours of the brewery as well every Wednesday at 6 30 and you can go to tasting sessions at 5 p.m at the brewery on Wednesdays and Fridays so if you're watching from the Melbourne area or if you do happen to find yourself in that area at some stage go and check out the Mountain Goat Brewery meant to be very very nice guys but apparently the name Mountain goat was chosen because it's a big hairy animal that never falls over and they thought this was kind of uh, quite quite like them when they were trying to secure their funding in the early days. But anyway, um, just to list a few of the other beers you can get from these guys, their regular beers include the Steam Ale, the High Tail Ale, the India Pale Ale and the Summer Ale and they also have a few special brews called Rare Breed and some one-off batches and I'm told that this is where the Mountain Goat Brewery really shines so Hopefully I can get a hold of a few of those in the near future and review them for you. And they also brew a cider as well called Two Step Cider, which I've heard is quite popular. But anyway, that's your kind of brief history of the Mountain Goat Brewery. Let me just bring up the camera quickly and you can have a little look at the artwork on the bottle of this one. It's quite simple, but it's quite nice. It's just quite a kind of cla almost classically modern take on it there. The light's kind of reflecting off that a bit badly, but you can just see there. There's the Mountain Goat. And it's quite a nice, it's quite a nice simple label. I quite like how they've presented this one here. And you can see the bottle cap just has the white goat's head on it there, the same as is on the bottle here. And it says organic steam ale. It's a 330 ml bottle, and it just says on the back, this is a certified organic steam ale. It's the product of an all-natural brewing process that incorporates cool fermentation and a hit of wheat malt. This, the result is a, a crisp palate cleansing ale. Thanks for supporting independent craft beer, Dave and Cam. A good beer is a natural beer. The steam ale contains only malted barley, malted wheat, hops, yeast and water. Bottled but not tinned. And it just talks a little bit. You can get your 10 cent refund when on at collection depots when it's sold in South Australia. But I'm in Victoria, so that doesn't really apply to me, unfortunately. But 10 cents is nothing. So let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here. You can see a nice kind of smoky opening on this one 
but I'm really interested, as I said, to see how this kind of matches up to the uh, the steam ale from Anchor. That's one of my that's kind of the one one of the cult classic beers in America. So hopefully this one is kind of as good as that. So as you can see, it's poured a really nice kind of almost hazy pale golden colour. There's a good bit of sediment in there actually, which is really quite nice. You can just see it all floating around, and there's just a good little bit of carbonation floating up to the top there. It's, from what I remember with the, the Anchor one, it is quite common to get that uh, a lot of sediment in this one. If I put my fingers behind it, you can see it is kind of semi-transparent, but it is kind of quite opaque. It's got a good bit of kind of colour to it, this one, and there's a finger of a very frothy white head there. A little bit of bumpiness to it, but mainly a frothy white head. So let's give it a smell and see how we get on. It's got a very sweet kind of yeasty taste to it, which is, from my experience, that's what you would actually expect of a steam of these steam ales. I remember the Anchor one having a very sweet kind of bready and yeasty character to it, but a lot of kind of pale bready malts it almost has a kind of. Uh, I remember in Germany when I was at the brewery, they had this nice pilsner malt, the pale kind of two roll malts, and it reminds me the smell of this reminds me a lot of that. It's got a lot of nice kind of sweet bready character to it, that pale malt coming out. But it's got a lot of kind of grassy and straw character to it as well. And some nice kind of fruity and citrusy notes coming out. It smells very, very fresh. It smells like a very kind of fresh bakery. It's almost as if you just took a little bit of lemon and kind of squeezed it on a nice kind of fresh batch of like German bread actually. Very, very nice smell, smell in beer. So without further ado, Let's get on and taste it. This is the very first time I'm tasting anything from Mountain Goat, so hopefully it's a good one. So, cheers. It's it's very, very light and has a very wet mouthfeel. That's the very first thing that's coming out on this one. It does have that kind of very light characteristic that you would expect of a steam ale. Yeah, it's got a kind of, it's quite a malty one. It definitely has that kind of pale, kind of light bready malt that you would expect of the style. It's, it's got a nice little sweetness to it, actually. There's definitely a little bit of yeasty, almost kind of biscuity malt flavour to this one. It's, it's got a really nice malt backbone, actually. It's quite highly carbonated, though. As I've said in quite a few of these reviews that I've done of Australian beers before, um, the Australian beers are always kind of fairly well carbonated just so they can deal with the heat here. It, it gets ridiculous in Australia from what I've told, but I've not really uh, experienced that yet, apparently. But yeah, it's got a really nice, sweet, bready and malty base, almost slightly biscuity actually, but it's actually quite a hoppy one as well. There's a teeny little bit of kind of aromatic -y spice coming out on this one. And the, the spice character kind of ling lingers in the middle of the tongue along with the, the kind of sweet, bready and yeasty flavours. But around the edges, this is where you're getting the kind of hay, kind of citrusy, grassy character from the hops coming out. It just goes around and gives it a nice little fresh outline around the tongue. At the start, at the top of the tongue and in the middle, it's actually quite a bit of dry character that's coming out there. So it's quite a nice, well-balanced feel on the tongue. But yeah, there's a good little bit of uh, this nice floral and aromatic -y character and it makes it very fresh and it complements that nice kind of sweet malt base in the middle of the beer very well. It starts off, the, the carbonation comes in and attacks the tongue quite quickly and you get the aromatic -y and citrusy flavours coming out. Then it moves in to that nice kind of sweet, bready, yeasty, biscuity malt base and then on the aftertaste you've got the grassiness comes out a little bit more than the citrus. It's this kind of lingering grassy, slightly aromatic flavour that goes into the aftertaste and you can feel the kind of uh, dryness of the beer coming out a little bit more in that in that part of the mouthfeel as well. But yeah, it's really quite light body this one. It's not even pushing the mid-bodied cat the mid-bodied part of the range actually but it's got a good it's got a good bit of carbonation quite highly carbonated actually and it's got a really good bit of dry character in it particularly 
in the uh, in the kind of aftertaste. But it's it's a quite a crisp one, and it's a very sessionable beer actually. If you, I can see what the uh, what they're going for with this one. It's quite a, a high demand beer. This one. And they do brew it at the Laverton Brewery, I'm sure, when they're doing their bigger batches. And you can see why, because it's, it's a good summer beer. And you can see why this one would be in demand during the summer in Australia. But um, yeah, it's, it's a really, really nice beer. In comparison with the Anchor one, it's quite different. I think it's a lot lighter and a lot more carbonated. This one would actually be beautiful to try on Cascale, I think, actually. And just have a little bit more of the malt profile being a little bit more prominent. The only thing I could say about it is that I do think the kind of bready and yeasty elements could be just that little bit more prominent in it. But overall, it's a really nice and quite sessionable beer. And it's an interesting take, again, on the steam ale style, which, as I said before, you would associate with Anchor. They're the kind of cult figures in this one. But it's a very, very nice beer. Hopefully I can review a few more mountain goat ones for you in the future, but it's been cool to visit the brewery for the first time. I hope you've enjoyed this beer review, and if you have tried this beer yourself, please let me know in the comments section below your own thoughts on it. Suggest Australian beers for me to have a look at as well. I've, I'm just new in Australia at the moment, so those of you who know their beers a bit better, let me know your own thoughts on that. But please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I hope you're enjoying my Australian reviews, and I will catch you again soon with the next one. Cheers.